So we've had a couple days to dive into Halo Infinite's version of Firefight, and it's been a blast. Finally getting a chance to play some repeatable PvE content, which is free from the skill-based matchmaking sweat fest that is currently their matchmaking system within Halo Infinite, and it's been a great time. I've had a lot of fun playing it. There are some points of feedback though, and the community has voiced their opinions on this, and we certainly will see some action by 343 about this topic. So we'll start off with the positive parts of the feedback here about Halo Infinite's Firefight, and then the second half will go into the negatives. If you guys enjoyed these informative videos, make sure to tap like, let's me know you want to see some more content like this. And if you're part of that 80% plus of people who are not subscribed to the channel watching this, well, you know what to do then to keep yourself up to date with everything going on with Halo. Major positive, the first thing I talk about is the networking, the desync fix that they added in with this place specifically. 343 is trying out a brand new networking model which should reduce that and it seems to be doing great. My experience has been pretty great. I haven't really noticed any kind of hitching or bugs or teleporting or anything like that. But it does seem like some things maybe need to be fixed a little bit when it comes to the new networking model. Mint Blitz actually brought up a few points on Twitter that I wanted to share with you guys here saying that some things that do need work are definitely caching fusion coils doesn't work anymore. The gravity hammer has lost its physics and lifting in man can glitches upon entering the higher your ping goes which if anyone's gonna experience high ping it would be mint blitz the skull mechanic has been a great addition where it comes to just being able to spice up the gameplay a little bit ramp up the difficulty and also i love the ui that they added to the upper left hand corner of the screen to let you know what that skull actually does because as a casual firefly fan i can't recognize the, every skull just by the icon so glad that change is made the map variety is very well done within firefight you have small maps, medium maps, and large scale maps, and a brand new map for the House of Reckoning. This helps bring different experiences while playing. Some maps have vehicles, some maps are infantry only. I will say that live fire is extremely difficult to play in matchmaking because of how small that map is and how condensed all the AI become. I've never gone past the first hill on that one on the heroic version of Firefight. So there's a nice challenge in there as well, which is really great. The pacing of these matches is also really well done, about 15 to 20 minutes for a match, which I think is is about the right timing when it comes to a firefight mode. Anything longer, it just for matchmaking purposes, it gets a little dragged out. Anything shorter, you feel like you didn't have enough of an experience. I actually really like the revive system where there is no life pool. And it's just if your whole team gets down, then the game ends. It's one way to help avoid people maybe like sandbagging to throw away their lives or anything like that with the life pool like you have with traditional firefight. I like the revive system. I think it's really cool. It also gets more utility to the repair field where if you throw the repair field down, it actually revives teammates as well, which is a great addition there talking about revives you also get an overshield on a revive so it definitely helps give players like that bonus of like okay i'm going out there to help save my teammate and help out with the team in general they should be rewarded with some kind of bonus which you get an overshield the person who gets revived gets an overshield and the person who does the reviving also gets an overshield i actually really like that change and like i mentioned the repair field is such a useful tool within firefight especially with someone who's driving around with a warthog that person needs to have the overshield since the vehicles don't respawn in firefight it makes them much more valuable and have to play much more tactically and thoughtful, which I really enjoy. I've seen some feedback, people saying they want to see vehicles be able to respawn. I don't like that because one, I think it just makes it so much more important for people to play with vehicles correctly. And like I said earlier, with the repair field, it gives players the opportunity to repair their vehicles. So if you're playing smart with the Warhog or Ghost or whatever kind of vehicle that's in the game, I actually played around the Banshee, was a little, which was a ton of fun. That if you get that person using the vehicle, the repair field, you can constantly run all over these banished AI. Now, honestly, one of the best points of feedback I would say is that it's a PVE mode free of skill-based matchmaking. It's a one spot where you can just play matchmaking and not have to just worry about sweating your balls off just to keep your head above water while playing a game. You can just sit back, relax, and blow some stuff up, which is exactly what this game needed with how strict the skill-based matchmaking can be within Halo Infinite. It just wears you down mentally. And this one is just like nice repeatable content you can jump in and have some fun. Now some points of improvement for Firefight, which are gonna be definitely taking consideration by 343. They're taking feedback from the community to see what's going on with that. One thing in particular is the XP rate. Now it's rather fair, but it seems like with the heroic version of Firefight, you don't really get that much more XP for doing a much more difficult task. Compared to the normal Firefight difficulty, I think it's just like a little extra like 100 XP after a match or something like that. Like nothing really worth stressing over and possibly losing a match over if you're doing solo queue matchmaking. I would say that the difficulty that they put into Firefight for the launch version of the mode 
I think it's rather fair. I think heroic is definitely the mode you want to play for a little bit more skilled players who know what they're doing. And normal is just good for just people who are like literally just jumping in for the first time or just don't really want to try too much and just want to play the game, you know? That's a perfect mode for them as well. I do feel like there is an opportunity there for a more of a difficult version of Firefight, like a legendary mythic, kind of like what they had back in Halo 5. So if you have like a squad of four of some really skilled players that know what they're doing when it comes to Firefight, it gives those players an opportunity to maybe gain some more XP for the amount of hours that they put into the game and also just a nice level of skill testing that Firefight can bring. But back on the topic of XP rates, it was actually showcased here by a Redditor about what the difference XP rates can be when it comes to playing Firefight. This person compared Husky Raid to Firefight. Husky Raid is one of the best modes to do your grind if you're trying to go for the heroic rank right there. And basically they showcase that between the two game modes, uh, within an hour of playing Husky Raid, you get about 19,000 XP compared to Firefight where it's just under 17,000 XP per hour. This is kind of expected. You see different modes have different XP rates. Uh, I think something like this would probably be balanced out here relatively soon because I really do feel like Firefight would be a fantastic way to just grind out that XP to get to heroic because you get you just get to sh jump in and shoot stuff. You don't have to stress about skill based matchmaking or anything like that or the mindless chaos that Husky Raid can be. Another point is that killing bosses should earn more score within the game than a standard enemy. Now I can maybe understand maybe not giving such a huge bonus to players as they probably have a way to register that only like the person who gets the last shot and that gets the kill gets all the points kind of thing. So I can imagine like trying to lower that to make it so then people who kill all the ads definitely can still be competitive when it comes to total score within the game. You know, we don't want like the same situation we had with Warzone back in Halo 5 where whatever team got that last shot and they get the kill got all the points, even if maybe the other team put 99% of the damage in. If one player on the other team gets that last kill shot, their team gets all the credit. It's not really that fair of an experience. So I think there is some room for improvement, maybe some way to kind of share score, like assist score or something like that. We'll have to wait and see. Talking about assists though, is that assists need to count. A lot, actually. Like I mentioned earlier, that the Warhog and vehicle play are so crucial when it comes to succeeding within Firefight. There was so many times when I was jumping in a Warhog, I was the driver, just kind of running, running circles around the banished. I got like 150 plus assists in a game, and my score, not so great. Didn't really gain that much XP from it because I wasn't getting actual kills. So really, the driver is kind of just taking a hit for the team just so then they could succeed in the win, which really shouldn't be the case. Talking about your kill count, let's see that in the menu. I want to see how many bad guys I destroyed within the game. Because it definitely makes a difference on how you play Firefight. Some people just go straight for the big name boss baddies, and some people like me like to try to help out the team and killing all the smaller guys, and so then we're not getting overwhelmed by so many things. There's different roles that you can play when it comes to playing Firefight, which is fantastic when it comes to gameplay. I just like to see that showcase within the scoreboard. The one thing I definitely noticed is that players can use vehicles, but the AI don't have any vehicles. And one map in particular I felt this was really unfair for the AI at least was on Deadlock. I was able to jump into a banshee and just constantly just run loops around these guys dropping banshee bombs splattering and just doing all the stuff you'd expect to do in a banshee and there's basically no counter for them unless they hit me with like a stun or they hit me with like a plasma grenade if i'm getting extra aggressive with the banshee but if i just kind of stayed back and just shot things no concern really when it comes to being taken out. I mean, yeah, they have like skewers, but they're still focused on players shooting at them. They don't really bother to look up if a Banshee's coming after them. So I'd like to see some way maybe like a tank comes in. I think that'd be a really cool boss fight to say on some of these BTB maps to give them like a Wraith or something like that. That'd be really fun, I think, to fight against. So I could see that being problematic with it being King the Hill. You'll have so many players in a tight area. A Wraith could come in and just blow up the entire team and the round ends. But maybe save that for like a legendary or mythic firefight that could come in later in the game. The one one thing felt interesting about the scoring mechanic in the game. If you score at least three hills within a game that you finish, then you still get the win. Interesting thing I saw multiple times when I was playing where like we got the first four hills and then on the last hill, which had some skulls and stuff and had one guy alive, I just told him like, hey, don't jump on the hill, let them capture that hill. Because there's only five hills that spawn within the game and whoever, whichever team has the majority of the hills at the end of the game, it wins. So it was a really odd mechanic where we're just like, hey, just stay back, let us respawn after that minute timer, let them capture that last hill so we can still get the win and the XP. I feel like a very odd mechanic. Like I understand for timing's sake, where it's just the regular matches that have been playing that are like, you know, four to one, five, zero, still lasts about 15 to 20 minutes. So if you had a game that went four and four and then in the last hill you finally capture, I could see that going to like 
30, possibly even 40 minutes long, which would be a really long match made match. Now I have a feeling this would be possible, but I really want to see it happen as well, is a grunt apocalypse round. Those rounds in Fire Fire have always been my favorite, but just because of the like, quantity of enemies you have to fight against, you get absolutely swarmed by all these low tier grunts, and of course the grunts are hilarious. There could be some limitations when it comes to the amount of AI that can be in the game at once, or something to have a true feeling of a grunt apocalypse round, but I just want to know if that's possible. With the addition of Firefight being added into matchmaking, 343 really should reconsider how they do their challenge system as well. I know it's not necessary for you to do the challenges to progress in the battle pass, but it really is the most optimal way. It's still high play when it comes to getting my weekly unlocks and progressing through the battle pass because of that great XP boost you get from completing challenges. Now, I can understand not having every challenge be available to be done within Firefight, totally makes sense, but I'd still like to see the majority of them be able to be done within firefight rather than to go into matchmaking against players so i feel like there's a little bit of a middle ground that can be obtained when it comes to this point of halo infinite in some extra halo news sketch the community director actually went on to the kind of funny podcast recently to talk about halo infinite and the future of the franchise also talking about campaign dlc and a match composer coming in but that's for tomorrow's video so make sure you subscribe to catch that one and i'll catch you guys all in the next video peace out